So I have the Nook Glow Light Plus right over here. This costs $200 from Barnes and Nobles. It's the most premium e-reader they sell. It only comes in one configuration of eight gigabytes and only one color option right now, which is black. The best way to understand this device is really comparing it against the other options available for e-readers at this price point. Right now, the Kindle Oasis costs $249 and the Kobo Forma costs $249 as well. And right below this, we have the Glow Light 3 which cost 119. This is right in the middle basically. I would consider this more of a premium device closer to the Forma or the Oasis. This should be a high-end device. Unfortunately, I don't really think it is. Let's talk about the screen for a second. It does have a 7.8 inch display at 300 DPI. It's not the quite same as a PPI resolution, but it's still very, very high quality. But where it really lacks is it's not a glass front screen. It's actually all plastic and it has a indent when it comes to the screen. So it's not a flush glass screen like you'll see on the Oasis or the Forma or even the Kindle Paperwhite for that matter or the other Kobos. This is not a flush screen at all. Now one thing I really do appreciate about this display though is it has something called night mode. It's really easy to understand Basically, all it means is warm light temperature control. It's really handy for reading at night. And honestly, it's something I expect from every single e-reader, but surprisingly, there's still quite a few out there that don't have this feature. I really appreciate that this device has that. Now the Glow Light Plus over here does not have an ambient light sensor though, so you have to adjust everything manually, which is not the biggest deal breaker in the world. I do appreciate on my Kindle Oasis, it has that ambient light sensor. But on this device, you can set the warm light to be on a schedule according to your local sunrise and sunset schedule. So that's kind of handy. But if you want to adjust the brightness of the screen, you have to do that manually. Now, the biggest thing that really makes this device not as premium as all the other devices that are around the same price point is the build quality. The front and the back of this thing is all plastic. It's kind of like this soft, rubbery plastic feeling. There's no metal or glass anywhere on this device. Now, Barnes & Noble does advertise this as a comfortable holding design, which kind of makes sense. That's one way of looking at it. But I would honestly be expecting a much higher premium quality for a $200 e-reader. I kind of wish they used metal instead of plastic. I would have rather sacrificed that holding design for something more premium feeling like the Kobo Forma, which is also rubber, but it feels very sturdy to hold. It just feels like a nicer device. This device, again, just feels like a big version of an old cheaper device. Now the bezels on this device are pretty big. The top and the bottom especially are basically a one inch bezel. It's it's not as bad as the Glowlight 3, which has big bezels but a smaller screen. Because this device has a 7.8 inch display, the bezels don't feel as bad. But I think it could have been a lot better had they used smaller bezels on the top and the bottom. The screen would have looked even larger, which would have been a huge plus but it's not that bad. The bezels are big, but because it's a big screen, it kind of offsets that. Now, just like the smaller version of this device, the Glowlight 3, this also has quite a few buttons everywhere. The first button I want to talk about is the home button. This device has a home button. It's not really a button. It's kind of a Nook logo that they turned into a button, and I don't really like this. All modern devices on smartphones, you don't really have home buttons anymore. Same thing on tablets, there's no more home buttons. And on e-readers, we're not seeing any home buttons anywhere else either. So it's really weird that Barnes & Noble still kept the home button on this device. If you've only ever used a Nook, that may be something you're okay with, but for someone like myself who uses multiple devices that all have no home button, it took me some getting used to, to get used to the fact I have to press this button to go back to a certain screen. The next set of buttons I wanna talk about are the page turn buttons. And I had the same complaint in my other video for the Glowlight 3, this device has page turn buttons on both sides. The buttons themselves are nice. They're very clicky, they're easy to press. I like the buttons. What I don't like is that there are two sets of buttons on each side. Now, people commented on my other video saying that if you're a lefty, that's really appreciated. And I do agree with that. I think functionality-wise, it's important to have buttons that can be supported on both sides. Even if you hold it one way and then rotate it, it should still work no matter what you do. And I think you could accomplish that by removing the branding on the front 
and just allowing it to be rotated without making you feel like you're holding the device upside down. Having extra mechanical buttons is just kind of annoying. I have two buttons on this device that I'll never use because they're on the wrong side of the device. I would much rather have a device like the Oasis or the Forma or the Libra H2O where they have two buttons on one side, but you can rotate the entire device without feeling like you're holding it upside down and you can still use the buttons in either hand. That is a much better way of doing it. All modern devices have rotation now. This device has a different approach. It's not a bad idea, but I don't like the idea of having extra buttons that you don't need. Now the power button on this device is also in a really interesting location. It's on the top middle of the device. I don't know why they put it in the middle. I kind of wish they just put it on the side of the device, left or right on the top. That would have been perfect, just like any other phone or iPad that you may be using. The button's usually always on the corner somewhere. But on this device, they put it in the middle. It's not the biggest deal breaker in the world again, but it's just an awkward position. You kind of have to go out of your way to power this thing off or on. You could also use the home button to unlock the device. But again, I often forget that there is a home button to begin with. So I'm always using the power button just for powering it off or on. On the direct opposite side of the power button, we have the micro USB charger in the middle at the bottom of the device. And that is not something I'm gonna complain about. Every other e-reader I have right now is also micro USB. It's something I wish everyone would change to USB-C, but when comparing it to other devices, it has the same charging port, so I can't really complain too much about that. If they used USB-C, that would have put it one step above everybody else. That's an easy win that I think anyone right now can do. Now, one extra port that they actually included on this device is something I've never seen before on any other e-reader. It's actually a port that we barely see anywhere now in 2021, and that is the inclusion of an audio jack. Now, I haven't tried this myself because because I don't use headphones like this anymore, but you could technically plug in a pair of headphones and listen to things on your Nook. That's a really cool feature. If you have people in your family that still use wired headphones or you have wired headphones yourself, that could actually be something that you really could benefit from. No other device like Kindle or Kobo has that feature. Every other device I've used only has support for Bluetooth headphones. I think that is the future, but again, there's still quite a few people in the world who use audio jacks, so this could be a really good feature for those people. One thing I don't quite understand about this audio jack though is the way they advertised it. On the website, they talk about it in a way where you can use this audio jack to plug into your car or a secondary speaker. It's just a really strange way of using this audio jack. I think they would rather advertise this has audiobook support, but that's not what they did. If I was using this for my car, I would just use my phone. A few other small things that are worth mentioning, this device is water resistant, which is quite handy if you read by the pool or by the beach or in the bathtub, I don't know. I've never done that before, but you could do that with the Snook. And also, they do have apps on your iPad or your Android device or your phone. You do, could download the Barnes & Noble app on any of those devices and continue reading between multiple devices. That is really handy. Now, a quick note about the software of this device. I do intend on making a full video comparing the software, something like the Kindle, and seeing which one is better. But here are my first impressions after using the software. It's really slow and not really a fan of it. It gets really clunky to use, the buttons and navigation are all over the place, and the menus don't make much sense to me. I really wish they optimized this for speed and efficiency. I don't think I can highlight properly on this either. I've had a lot of struggles with that too. So overall, I am not a fan of the software. The only thing I do like about it is they have shortcuts for the buttons. If you press and hold the home button, the backlight turns off. And also with the page turn buttons, pressing and holding on that will quickly forward you through the chapter or several pages. Now, I really wanted to buy a Nook because I love going to Barnes and Noble. I love going through the bookstore and just shopping around. Even if I don't buy paperback books anymore, just going to a bookstore and supporting local bookstores is something I'm really passionate about. And the good thing about buying a Nook is you can go to any Barnes and Noble and get support from a real person in the store, which is really, really cool. But I don't really see myself buying a Nook for functionality purposes. I think you can get much better functionality from a Kindle or a Kobo and a much better experience for the same price 
or a little bit less even with a lower model. If I was gonna spend 200 bucks on an e-reader, I would probably save up an extra 50 bucks and buy a Kindle Oasis or a Kindle Forma instead. Or if I was on a budget, I would go down to the Kobo Clara or the Kindle Paperwhite over this device. I really cannot recommend this device in the current form that it's in unless you have some ties to Barnes & Noble and their ecosystem, this device I do not think is worth the $200 price point. At the end of the day though, this is just an e-reader. It helps us read more books and that's what matters at the end of the day. You can buy a Kindle, a Kobo, or a Nook. They all do the same thing. As long as you're reading books, that's what matters. Right now on the screen, I have a link to my Glowlight 3 review, which is the smaller version of this device. If you want something a little cheaper, that might be worth considering. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.